I am being 100% serious. This is a huge deal. Why? What, what, do, you, what do you mean? You've had good, I mean, you've had much better, bigger, greater people, I think, on your show than me. What do you mean, no? You're the, you're the biggest and the best. Oh, wow. I, I, <laughs> by the way, I've never been referred to as the biggest or the best. I'm usually referred to as like the bronze medal of Hollywood. So. Do, you, yeah, do you think you have a typecast in this, in this city? In this world? Yeah. Um, I, well, what, what would you say it is? Like, I, got a, <laughs> always something wrong with me? <laughs> Something, something's off physically. I don't know. In in Luca, I, I mean, you know. Oh, Luca, yeah. I mean, you. So, you oh, I'm a goofy, you got a goofball. Is that what you're talking about? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, you uh, you have quite the range of characters, and and to be honest, we don't have movie stars in here. Oh, dude. you don't. Yeah. I mean, I, I, no, 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 like, no, we don't. Oh, we sorry to do. pop your hymen. <laughs> yeah, uh, here I am. Yo. <laughs> wow, this is movie exciting. star in the building. I, I, I'm barely. sweating. Honestly, barely. Really? Do you? And maybe that sweater. sweater. Take off the sweater. Yeah, there you go. Velour is not good for a hot day. It is damp in here. It is That's what damp. I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He comes in here. He looks around. And he goes, it's damp in here. Not, but, but, and, but not with moisture. I meant with sound. And I'm like, what are we in the good, Everglades? Good uh, sound. <laughs> yeah. the Everglades. Yeah. Are we in some sort of deep rainforest? We're in the deep jungle. Yeah. Have you ever been to the Rainforest Cafe? Um, at Disneyland. I mean, yeah, it exists many places, but love like, Disneyland is one place. I swear on my that's the thing that, that's the only one I would ever bear to go to. Yeah. Well, I love Disneyland. Disneyland, anything Disneyland is, I find enjoyable. That's like, and you're a big part of the Disney family. I guess so. Isn't that great? I know, that's crazy. Is it wild to, <laughs> is there a responsibility that comes along with voicing a character that has this presence? I mean, dude, I think about my nephew who's two years old, who's been watching that movie since, I mean, it, it, the, this, the earliest stages of him being able to just like, uh, understand what's going on in front of his face like it has such a deep impact in culture and in youth but also yeah. like it, it touches numerous generations yeah well i don't mean the responsibility yeah there's a responsibility with everything i mean i don't know if i think of it as that though when i'm doing it i think i mean i'm just trying to make people laugh most of the time make people move people um i think with everything not even with just with voice acting like but with voice acting it's 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 i don't know it's but it's easier though because you don't have to memorize your lines. I find so mm -hmm. that's 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 a plus. Um, but I do love it. I love seeing. I love meeting kids who come up to me and they're like, "I love Luca. You're Luca. You're Alberto from Luca. Say the thing. Say the thing." And I'll do the Silencio Bruno and I'll make them laugh and mix their day. And I love that. Well, do the thing. Let me do the thing. Will it make you happy? Yeah, I want to do Silencio that. Bruno. <laughs> I don't know if my voice is the same. I don't know because I find I uh, I get discouraged sometimes. It's like, was that actually me? Or am I I'm in the Twilight Zone? I don't know. Do you realize <laughs> the size or magnitude of a project while you're making it, or only after it's released? Good question. I'm oh I I'm I'm getting told that it's big, but for some reason I'm I'm so like never aware of anything. <laughs> I'm so unaware that I'm alive most of the time. Um. So like when I was when I did it when I was a kid I did it and and I really didn't I don't think I got it I don't think I got it until afterwards like wow this is Stephen King's universe this is massive to the max um, and this is like the biggest opportunity I've had so far I mean I it felt like that when I was on the set it was it was different from anything I'd done before that um, but I was not anticipating like th all the response and all the reception even like, it is for everything pretty so much but. Do you realize or notice your life change between it one and two? Well, here's the thing. I used to uh, eat the, you know, pistachios? Yeah. I used to, uh, you know, I used to fool with the ones that are hard to open. Now I don't even bother with them. So. Wow. You just, <laughs> you're, you're, you're so rich that you get now. <laughs> That's it. It's all that money. I don't I just buy peeled, uh, cracked pistachios. How? I'm not a peasant. I'm not a pedestrian <laughs> anymore. No bystander in this studio. <laughs> I mean... There is, does fame change the way you approach a character or do you have to kind of keep yourself isolated from like, I don't know, like how, how do you take on a new role? I don't think I'm that famous, guys. I don't, I, and I'm not really. I'm really not that, mm. I, I, well, I'm not. I, I mean, I have, a, I have a, 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 a handful of fame, but compared to like these guys in Korea or even, you know what's another, another crazy thing to think about? There's people in like Armenia and like Bulgaria that I, we have no idea about, but like they're the most massive thing in mm -hmm. Bulgaria. Totally. Like and it's like, they're like the that. Elvis of everything. And so like, I'm just the smallest fraction of that. But you think they're the not world. watching Shazam? I'm sure they're seeing Shazam, but then there's also like, uh, what's his face? What's his name? Uh, Boris, Boris Manko, who's like the <laughs> Elvis of, um, what's the, what's the, where's, where's Action Bronson from? Um, uh, Where's Dua Lipa from? Oh, uh, is this Slovenia? It's no, one of them. It's uh, Slovakia. No, 
It's where BB Rex is from. Yeah, where BB oh Rex is from. Oh my God. Uh, what is it? It starts with an A. Ar- Armenia. Ar- 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 no. Albania. Albania. That's there we what. Go. Albanian God, teamwork. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I forgot what we were talking about, but yes, Albania. So uh, okay. <laughs> your answer. You're, 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 you're looking at fame from that perspective, right? Like, and I, I agree know. with you. Even in America, like you can go to certain cities. We were on like local radio for a long time and you can go to Kansas City and there's like a, a couple people who are so fucking famous just in Kansas City. Yeah. But they go to columbia missouri nobody knows them yeah like, like it is it is ve- th- th- that type of fame does exist um but i i just I'm I, well, oh, so, so to answer your question about does it change my approach to characters yeah no 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 i i'm like i said before i'm very unaware while i'm like it's it, it always harkens back to when i was a kid really young and, and i discovered musical theater and that was like the ultimate vice of self-expression t- to save me from not getting suspended from elementary school and it's that same thing like if i didn't have it i'm so and i'm this is gonna sound cheeseball but it's true i'm so freaking so grateful that i have it because otherwise i think i would be really messed up i think i'd go crazy well, if i wasn't I, being able to play characters i find that really interesting because you say it's the most uh, true form of self-expression but the reality is you're not expressing yourself you're expressing somebody else right well, yes, but well, maybe you know, maybe I need to go to therapy for that too. Um, like, I, I but I always have felt really um, more myself when I'm when I'm a character. <laughs> God, maybe I got personality disorder or something like that. But uh, <laughs> no, I, I. But it is also, but it is self expression because since I can remember, I've always been dressing up and playing pretend, and now I get to do that for my job, which is like so. so I think a lot of it is luck, um, but I'm you know again, I'm so grateful. Uh, so, did your parents know that you wanted to do this, or did you have to tell them like this is something you wanted to pursue? I didn't know it was an actual thing. I just thought that there, I, well, I didn't know how to get. It was never. It was never like um, I want to be an actor. I wanted to be in the movies. I wanted to escape. I wanted to be Indiana Jones. I wanted to be Batman. You know, I wanted to like do that. But I didn't know that there was a, there was a job. I thought these people were. And when I was a kid, you know, and then I've, I've, eventually I grew up um, and learned. About, my, my my uncle and my dad are uh, in the film industry and I and I would my dad was a teamster for a long time and he'd pick me up and he would take me to set and I would see all of these things and I was just so infatuated and enamored with the sets and the magic and it was there was something so velvet and and, and uh, enriching about it all and I was like god this world is so fantastical it's like it gives me that feel like that butterflies you know and then I discovered musical theater and then those two wires got crossed somehow and that feeling of liberation of being on a stage, um, some you know, it landed me in in audition rooms and stuff. Do those butterflies exist still today when you go on set? Oh yeah, they never go away. There's moments where I'm having an epiphany, like when I was doing Shazam too. I was in a I was on a sound stage in like this cave, and I'm holding a prop, I'm holding a lantern, which is like you know a lantern. But <laughs> but it was so cool because I remember when I was a kid and I would watch like. Indiana Jones again, I found that out. Or the Goonies or something, and they're in that cave system, and I'm like, I want to be in that cave system. I want to hold a light. I want to hold a flashlight, you know? I just want to, like, do it. I want to hold a sword or, like, anything. I just want to be... I want to have all the accoutrement to be the character, you know, to play pretend. It's, like, still, like, I'm, like, a like a 10-year-old boy playing army in the forest. It's, like... And then I look around, and I have this epiphany. I'm like, God, dude, I'm actually able to do this shit. Like, I'm actually able to... Like, this is my job? And since when... Like, it's crazy. And then I realized, you know, that this is a thing that I can do forever. It was when I was maybe around nine years old, when I I think I did my first musical, and I was like, "This is a thing. Like, this is a thing." Okay, so I I, I want to do this forever because it's saving me from everything else. Like the shit that I was also getting in trouble for at school, I was getting praised for when I was doing like theater, like in my theater classes and stuff. So I was like, "Wow, okay." So I'm not like a terrible person. I was just like misunderstood or, or something, I guess. But the- what a beautiful realization to come to. Mm-hmm. And that's because it, once you realize that you're just misunderstood yeah, and you're actually being celebrated for being exactly who you are, that allows you to fucking flourish and spread your wings in ways and directions that you couldn't even imagine. Well, yeah, it also eliminated so many insecurities about, you know, well, also I was going to school and I was quoting stuff from Goodfellas as a six-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like talking to a kid. I'm like, I'll pop you in your fucking mouth, kiddo. And I was, I was just a hot mess. And then I was doing that for my theater director, and she was like, "You're a classic. You're a genius. You're an old soul. I love it." And I was like, "Thanks. Oh my god, really? So I should keep doing it. I should keep doing this." And she's like, "Oh my god, never stop." And, uh, and then so I was getting in trouble at school, but I would go to the Adderley School. This was where the theater company I went to as a kid, and I would go there and. 
I felt like like I could fly again. You know, it's it just great. It was the great. I got bit by that bug, and I've been infected ever since. Do you still find that? Like that, that that exists where in real life you do one thing, but then you show up to set and in a situation you can do that exact same thing and be celebrated. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it, it, the older I get, the more professional I feel like I have to be. When I was a kid, I got away with a lot more. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm an adult. I'm a, I guess I am an adult technically. Um, so I got to, um, but I don't know, the set, being on a set or being on, you know, it always felt like a circus to me. But I guess and maybe it's changing. Maybe something's changing where people are getting more high strung or something. But do I mean, you, people do understand when they work with me that I'm not. Uh, I, I want to make people feel like at ease. I want to. I want to continue to make jokes even off off camera when the camera's not rolling. I want people to feel comfortable. I'm still gonna probably. Uh, I'm not just gonna sit quietly and like sulk in a corner or something. It's a lot of pressure to be on set because at the end of the day, when you're pretty t uh, high on the call sheet, which you know, you are. Sometimes uh, it, it, the day kind of counts on you now. Yes, and I get the job done. I have to, and I love to. Um, but was I been hot on this mic this whole time? No, no you're yeah, you, you sound, sound great. Okay, good. Um, you sound wonderful. Thanks. Uh, I love the sound. It feels like I'm on NPR. It's so <laughs> crisp. <laughs> um, uh, but no, I get the job done. I, I I have to learn my life. I have no other choice, and I love I love to put the work in. That's the shit that I love to put the work in for. Like other stuff, not so much. I love also like making music, learning about music stuff. I I love all the the creative the creative. Wait, we'll vessels. get into that in a second. Yeah, yeah. Do you learn your lines same day, or do you know your lines like how far in advance? Mm, good question. It depends. It depends on how many lines. Like I usually, it also depends on the character. Like a character like Freddy, not trying to demean Freddy in any way for Shazam, but it's it, he's really easy for me to play. He's not that much of a challenge. Why? He's just funny. I could turn that on and off. Like, I, and I've I've always been able to like to talk, like if I I know that I have to talk really fast or like ah uh, like play up the 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 thing or whatever it is the voice or the um the 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 neurotic or sporadic spazziness whatever it is and that's just easy that's an on and off thing but if it's like the stuff that's internal which I still embrace and love and it's it's challenging but I always accept a challenge uh, with determination and with eager and I and that's always really fun but I need to put more time and thought and in, into that stuff. What's the hardest character you had to bring to life? Oh, uh, a great one who I love. This character named Fraser for this show. We are who we are. That I shot in Italy for like six and a half months. That was like, that was uh, remarkable. What was the hardest part about it? Well, he didn't talk that much, and I'm I'm a motor mouth, so, <laughs> so I really had to believe and feel all of these things all of the time in order for it to be. And I was working with Luca Guadagnino, who's one of the most astounding, renowned, genius, like literal literal geniuses uh, directors of this time. And he's like he's incredible. He's like a, a Bertolucci or a um, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Federico Fellini or something. Or, anyway, he's incredible. And um, so working with him, I really wanted to, like, I really wanted it to be authentic. I really wanted it to be genuine. And I maybe I maybe went too far because I took it home with me and I was, like, kind of in turmoil for a second. And then I kind of had an identity crisis. I was, like, 16 or something and I was, like, okay, now let's figure out Jack again. Let's be Jack again. How do we do that? And then I started un unraveling this this whole thing about, you know, me what, what what is it am i just a character am i funny still am i what, what, what so that was a thing but then i've but then i've gained more security in knowing that there's a human beneath this character and i can have these many masks and still be myself you know um and i'm just you know i'm, I'm a born performer that's great but at the end of the day what's most important is maintaining your humanity and your humility uh and having a healthy balance a healthy relationship with your ego and Things like that. Is it fair to say that, like, from losing yourself in a character, you actually, like, learn new things about yourself? It's not crazy to say. No, it's actually, it's great. Because I think you, you kind of, it's just like people say you have to make mistakes to learn uh, the thing. And I don't know if it was a mistake. I think I, it was a good, no. the result was good. I, I'm happy with the result. Um, and it was worth it. And you can people can also say that, like, art is always sacrifice. Which I don't think necessarily it has to be. It can be. You can make the choice to make it that way. Like, you can hurt yourself to make an art feel better. But do you think certain projects warrant that? No, they never warrant it. I mean, w they never do. It's always up to the actor, I think. Like, no, like, they'll actually probably say, well, Jack, let's not, let's not, like, let's not hurt ourselves here. Let's not, like, but there are some directors that I love. Like, oh, who directed Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind? He, Jim Carrey, um, he, when he met with that director, 
uh, the director said to him, he had just gotten over a breakup with Jenny McCarthy, and it was like heartbreaking. His heart was crushed. He was in a horrible place. And he met with this director, and it was just like every other meeting in Hollywood he goes to breakfast with and whatever. And the director's like, oh, you are so sad. Why are you so sad? And he's like, just life is just so distressing. And he's like, well, stay there. Stay in this place because this movie will be so perfect for you. You must stay here. You stay in this. You sulk in it. And, and then it's like, it's like oh, sacrificing your own, like your, in, your integrity for creativity. So, I have friends, and, and by the way, I do you think we've had a, a movie star on? Alex Wolf is a friend of ours for I a long Alex time. I love Alex Wolf. He's one of my good friends. Yeah, he. Oh, love Alex, brother. We will Facetime like. him the second we get done here. Please, that's He's great. Really, I've known him. I think I've known him fifteen years. Yeah, I'm like Father Time. Wow, um, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's great. It's fucked up. Um, but he has gotten really incredibly deep into fucking characters. Like, yeah, he, he's he, an insane. Wow, yeah, I'm he's really into it. Yeah, I know. That like yeah. he did uh the, the the Boston Bomber movie, he got so deeply into this disgusting, grotesque human being and like really I, I, it was really fascinating. Uh, but I do wonder like when you do that at an age of, like 16 when you're also in the process of figuring out yourself. Like well, Yeah, well that was where it was cool. That's where we I became some sort of like symbiote with my character. But on accident. Like, I was also not really trying to be a method actor or do the Val Kilmer or Robert De Niro thing. But I would read... My, I, but this is, like, also very different. Like, I'll, on a movie like Shazam or a show like Me, Myself, and I or It or something, maybe I'll read the script twice. But but it was great because I was reading the script every day before I started. I was there, like, stuck. I was supposed to shoot, like, within the week that I got to Italy. And I was there for, like, a month and a half not doing anything. So nobody was telling me anything I think but Luca was I think he was messing with me he was like we're just gonna screw with his head and he did a lot of stuff like that which was great um he's, he's genius but I was there for a long time and I would walk around pretending like I was my character I'd like develop I developed a walk that I had to shake off after too like a like a weird gait that I had um and I would like interact with people like kind of um like that precocious little asshole that Fraser was uh and and then somewhere along the way, I, I had no other choice because I'd also never been to Europe or Italy before and w for anything. And I was like, this is a new place. I'm here all alone. And I'm like, this is such a... So I have to... I have no other choice but to surrender to my environment in a way, you know? And I did that. And then when I did that, I kind of let something go. And then I had to dye my hair. Also, a big part of it was like, you know, dyeing my hair and having glasses. And I had blonde well, that hair. That changes everything. Yeah, I look at myself in the mirror. I'm like, that's it's okay. So that's not Jack. This is not... Like, this is not Jack. I mean, Jack was born 2003, September 3rd, whatever, but, like, who I'm looking at right now, that's a different, that's a different person. And then to, like, sleep with that, and then wake up the next morning with that. Looking in the, it was, it was so trippy, dude. It was so trippy. I never experienced anything like it. Is that something you chase in a role again? Not every time. It's taxing. But I love it. I do. It's taxing, and I, and you do have to pay a price, I think, for that. But I, who's to say if it's worth it or not? I think maybe, maybe. So you understand Austin Butler still talking like Elvis? Yeah, I, I and I, I, I exactly. I don't. I mean, he. Yeah, and the fact. Yeah, I do. I get it. Thanks. I love him. Actually, I met him in Las Vegas, and I, I thought he was doing like a bit because you know what? I, I shook. I went to shake his hand, and I was like, "Hey, nice to meet you." It's, you did incredibly in the movie, and he's like, "Thank you, thank you very much." <laughs> and I was like, huh, "Yeah, I, you're really good at the impression. You're really good. You're really good at Elvis." <laughs> but you get how you could get lost in it easily. Oh yeah, it's super easy. But also as actors, as as just like creatives, as you must understand as well, like it's w being creative and creating something of yourself is one of the most e egocentric things you can do. Mm -hmm. And whether you're not, you, you want to take an approach, you want to be uh, like aggressive, you want to have a, a, a hostile ego or, or a negative relationship with your ego, you can. I'm not, I don't think it's it's that, that healthy. But you, if you're if you're gonna create something, you must know that that you and your ego if you have no ego you will have no um conscious of yourself but i think that if you have a healthy relationship with 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 it then um you can flourish you can thrive but is that something that's acquired or is it something that's innate no i don't think anything is. i think some things are innate but i think innate talent or innate whatever can only get you so far you have to apply the the rudimentary functions of the stuff that either you learned or you are you you gather from doing it so long or doing it for however i like rudimentary functions meaning like like discipline I mean, yeah you know, like yeah like i mean discipline in all forms yeah dis discipline is super duper important discipline is much more important than the motivation or talent i think and uh -huh. luck i think also does exist really i do 
What do you think the luckiest thing to happen to oh, you is? I just feel like so much because there's so I think about so many ta- there's so many freaking talented people that never get a place in the sun. Totally, and it's so aggravating to me. And there's also great scripts that I read that never get made. They're some of the best scripts I have ever read, and that's a bummer. You know, I think a lot of things are circumstantial. I think this life is kind of pretty, pretty plot driven. One hundred percent. It's kind of a bummer, you no, know. I, I mean, I always say that, like, talent- but I'm grateful as shit. Like, I have to be because otherwise, I could lose. The moment I stop fighting for it, the moment I stop caring, I could lose it in a second. And I'm always get worried about jinxing things. Like, if I do a if I do a meeting, I don't want to talk about it after. Like, if I take a meeting with a great director, anybody who asks me, like, how was that meeting with with Wes Anderson or whoever it was, I'm like, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. The moment we talk about it, the, the, and then they're like, no, Jack, let's manifest it. It's like, stop. If I get excited about it, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to get it. So I have to like, I have to be internal. I have all these weird. I get that. CD rules. <laughs> because you realize that it is fleeting. Yeah, it all is, man. Yeah. We're just riding and life ebbs and flows and, and that can go both ways. But isn't that a scary realization to come alongside the realization that you can do this forever? No, I want to. I want to do this forever. But at the same time, it is fleeting. Well, forever, whatever. I'm going to die one day, you know, hopefully late. I mean, knock on wood, man. Thank God you got wood here for that. Dude, is that I, why you got that there? I knock on a lot. Oh, that's good. That's also the manifestation couch, but you don't need to really speak much into existence, just internally. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it is, <laughs> there is, I don't know, like, I get that. I very much understand jinxing shit. Yeah. Fuck. What are you thinking? All right, so Shazam. Okay. This At the end of the first one, your character gets superpowers. Mm-hmm. Is it a bummer that you never got actually get to put the suit on though? Oh, man, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. I, I got I got a I got a fantasy about wearing that suit or sneaking in and we're just wearing that suit one day. That would be a dream. Oh, I mean, I get to see Adam Brody do it and that's kind of that's that's kind of a dream too though. Yeah. <laughs> Tight. <laughs> Tight. <laughs> Up. Do you guys get the hang, up. Do you guys get to hang out and film with the grown up versions of yourself? Like, are you guys ever on set together? We're on set together, but we don't really communicate. We kind of like are two. Like, it's like the Jets and the Sharks. We don't really talk that much. <laughs> yeah. We kind of. <laughs> we don't really Wait, time to do press on a red carpet. <laughs> no, I mean I see them, and I I was just doing press with them all day, and um I I, I would talk to Adam. I, I love Adam, and uh, he's a he's a uh, maybe I shouldn't say where he lives. Ah, uh, whatever. It I won't. But um, <laughs> like no, no, no. But no, we no. grew up in that. We live, kind of lived in the same neighborhood, and uh, we like the same things. And I mean, but we probably only have one conversation about like how we're gonna approach playing the same character, which was funny. We like we like met one day when the, when we did the first one, and he's like, so "How are you gonna do this?" I was like, "Oh, I don't, I don't know. I'm just gonna be like funny, I think." And he's like, oh, "Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, good. I'll just follow your lead." And I was like, "Okay," and that was like, pretty much it. And, and then, he said that to you. Yeah, he was gonna follow your lead. I guess so, because I started the movie. By the way, Shazam comes out March 17th. <laughs> In a theater near you. Yes, baby. That's right. That's All right, well, let's talk about that then. What's... Wait. Yeah. Oh, you got... I, I, no, no, no. Please. No stepping miss, on toes. What is the... Uh, <laughs> What's the uh, training like on what you can talk about and what you can't talk about when it Dude, comes to Dude, I don't promoting? read the talking points. I just avoid saying pretty much anything. And I'm so... <laughs> I've mastered the art of vagueness. Mastered it. <laughs> I've gotten so good at being so nondescript, but also using so many flowery <laughs> words and sounding like I'm saying something, but I've really said nothing at all the entire time. Just rambling. It's like, I, I've mastered... You know what I did? Is like, you know, like writing an essay or something in school and you didn't read the book, but you're like, this was a book about so many incredible, incredulous, genius things. I love the part about the character development and the ride of the lifetime. It's a hero, ultimate hero's journey. It's like you're saying nothing, but so I can do that. I can do that all day. Bravo. I just want to ask you questions about the movie and watch you try to dance around them. (laughs) What is the hardest part about this whole thing, though? Is it having conversations like this and having to maintain that shred of secrecy or... I I don't know, man. Uh, I I mean, I don't... It's not hard. It's just kind of... not saying this is actually refreshing. This is a refreshing thing I'm doing today. Everything else, it's, it's sort of redundant. It's sort of redundant. Uh, answering the same questions all day, you know, it's... Do you feel <laughs> required to share who you are in order to be successful in the movie business? Hell no. I don't, well, I, but I have. I wish I didn't. I wish I haven't exposed so many things about me. What do you wish you took could take back? First of all, my opinion is this, and I'm, I, I don't want to get political or anything like that, but I will say that I think actors should be able to act, uh, you know, to the, whatever extent they can, I don't know. So I think that acting is is the most important part of it, and and this the the, the playing pretend aspect. So I don't want you know handouts for being a certain thing, or you know. I don't I don't want real life to bleed into art. Like I don't think that actors also should talk about the, the these kind of things to begin with. I think that, that we have, unless we we get the authority to, which like I'm no I'm not 
a politician or anything like that, so I would never speak on politics or anything like that because I don't literally know what I'm talking about for most things. I have, you know, one job, and that is to be an actor and palatable most of the time. And that's not dehumanizing, actually, because I still am able to be a human just in certain lights, and I signed up for this. Unfor- I mean, not unfortunately. I do enjoy it. But there are obligations of the public eye that I, I have to, like... Fit but, but there within. is a luxury that you have that like a musician may not like you have the ability to hide behind characters whereas yeah. a musician is hiding not really I mean behind a record but those records you know eight times out of ten are probably about their life you know so it reveals so much about who they are and yes like you can learn about who but you also, are how do the you characters know? you play. You know, because, like, you can make an album about a breakup and that never happened. Oh, 100%. And people you know? do that all the time. Like, yeah. Sam Smith, for example, their early works were, yeah. I mean, about things that they witnessed going on around them. And uh, some of the most amazing songs, like, their biggest hits were crafted on that. Mm-hmm. And this deep level of empathy and this ability to, like, inject themselves into somebody else's life and story. Love Sam Smith. Totally accurate. But most people write as a way to, like... I don't know. Like the the people we do talk to are a majority of like musicians, and I can say that. I mean, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong because he's technically the historian around here. After 16 years of doing this, <laughs> I, I would say most artists are writing about shit that is happening, like ripped from their reality. Now, yeah, I would say 90 percent of them are. Yeah, and so it makes it like not hard, but just you know, yeah. choose not to talk about it. Yeah, well, there's times when I I do like. I'll express lots of things about, like, the, my passions and stuff like that, but but also I feel like I want to preserve a lot of... My, I've also, my mom has said this, like, Jack, keep, try and keep... Because you're now, like, in the public eye, you're going to be stripped of a lot of you, and people are going to be wanting things, pieces of you. So try to keep as much of yourself sacred and preserve it as best you can. And ever since then, I've been like, oh, yeah, like, I don't I don't want to, I don't want to like, be around vampiric things. I, I get freaked out. Um, so... I get that. You know what I mean? I, I totally understand. But once that. I heard that, like otherwise I wouldn't probably I wouldn't give it I wouldn't care. Do I would you, probably say everything I'm an open book. I'm an open book anyway. Like if you know, off air I'll be an open book. I'll tell you anything. But now I have to be conscientious because also people have there's so much judgment. Also, I think that's why there's so many kids that are depressed. And I, luckily I'm aware of the, behind the curtains what's going on. But there's so many kids that aren't and they're getting cyberbullied or whatever it is and just, because they're expressing themselves or their opinions, but and social media sounds great on paper, you know, a, a world's, uh, everybody in the world coming together and, and sharing their mind, speaking their mind and, you know, coming together and forming a community. Um, but you, it's a lot of judgment. Are you grateful for the childhood you had? I don't want to pry, yes. but it's, I mean, just based on the little yes. bit that you shared, yes. even just saying it was wild. Yeah. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful for everything. I think, I believe that nothing happens to us. Everything happens for us. And so all the things, even the, the hardship and the obstacles and the setbacks and everything, I, I, I also know not to expect anything, but to anticipate everything into uh, uh, that. I, that I know that there'll probably be more failure in my life than success. How do you come to these like uh, really life changing realizations at the ripe age of like, what are you? 20? 19. Jesus Christmas. I know. I, I don't know. I've always been thinking. I never stopped thinking. Do you, does your brain ever slow down? No. Um, that is really fascinating because those are incredible. Like, I mean, they're not, they are mantras because they are ways they, to live totally your life. Are, yeah. But they are also like really just pillar principles Yeah, that are is. really, yeah, really well thought out. So I'm just wondering, like, does that come from hardship? Do you talk that through with the yeah, therapist? Yeah, I think a little bit. Or do you just overanalyze yourself? I think I do a lot of that. Yeah, I do a lot of overanalyzing myself. Do you overanalyze the hardship? I overanalyze it. No, I think it's that, that's the stuff that's pretty simple, actually. I think that's stuff that just happens. Uh, you know, and, and we just we deal with it however we want to deal with it. But also, I do think that I do believe in fate a little bit. I do think that things are meant to happen the way they're supposed to. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's no proof of it, but I like to think it because it's comforting. They don't happen to us. They happen for us. Exactly. So, therefore, we're on the path. We're on the right path. I mean, you could also make decisions. You, you know, you, there's you have free will to do whatever the hell you want. You can make decisions. I can do make a decision, kick your camera over right now. But that probably wouldn't be ethical. <laughs> That's, that, that is true. I, mean, I could though. It could be good content. That'd be pretty sick. <laughs> it'd be kind of sick. It'd be rock and roll. We'd love that. We won't fight you. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. We should start with that <laughs> before. Every... Oh, that'd be sick. Kick something. By the way, we fight? won't fight you. <laughs> Just in case you say anything we don't agree with, we will not fight you. <laughs> not here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, being in Shazam is. A fucking franchise to yeah. say the least do you i mean when 
does that like come into play when you're making a decision whether to take something on or not? Like how long it can go? Or do you really just look at something for the immediate? No, no. I think about it. I have to think long term. Like there's a show. Like there'll be a show. Um, and if it's a show, they're like, yeah, we're going to sign you. It'll be a six year deal. Six yeah, they're year huge. Contract. I'd be like, uh-uh. No, that's okay. I'll do a limited series. I love those. That's fun. But I did I did a network television show for a long time and it was super duper hard. You get, you get a script uh, every week and you memorize the script like that those that those lines what you have, kind you of shoot show? an episode a day or uh, every three days oh shit was yeah. it on like a sound stage or are you shooting yeah, on a sound stage yeah yeah that's those are crazy craziness yeah 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 <laughs> insane I watched my friends do that at Nickelodeon like yeah, Carly those same and Victorious ki- yeah those, Nick, those Nickelodeon kids had to do the same stuff oh my god yeah 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 you get a script yeah, totally you did three episodes a week though Some, no, no 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 we did one episode one, every three days holy shit yeah it's gnarly that is wild. Yeah. Taxing. Definitely. But taxing. conditioning, right? But also there were times when like I would get I would be sick and they're like, Oh no, that's you you can't like not you have to you, you're, Yeah, it doesn't you're, matter. You have to still do it. And oh I was God, like, imagine okay. if you didn't show up. But you know what? Also that's also great. That also informed me so much about like, yeah, the show must go on. And even as a kid, like I would get really not nervous but anxious, I guess, uh. before every audition. My my manager who was like my second dad would pick me up from from school and elementary school and take me on auditions, and I was like, I would get really car sick and throw up every time before an audition, but because I was like really anxious, not necessarily nervous, but like like excited or something, and I would like throw up. And he's like, Jack, we don't have to do this audition, by the way. You know, we don't have to if you're still feeling bad. I was like, No, it's okay. I'm really excited. Let's go. And I, because like my my theater person when I was a kid, my theater director told me this is and this is stuck with me. And it's a common phrase; everybody says it. But the show must go on, and in all facets of life, in every realm of life, you have to stay resilient or, or try to gain resilience. And every scar, I think, adds to that thicker layer of skin, making you more definitively in your character. And that's a kind of a thing I obsess with too. That's- Even physically, like getting a scar falling down and getting a scar, it's like that's gonna heal good. That's gonna look. That's gonna be cool. <laughs> that's just me more. I'm being me. I'm getting me more. Yeah, it's just mm-hmm. with you. Yeah. That's, uh, there really is like, there's, it's not pressure, but there is, it is, it's a big thing to come to terms with that the show must go on with or without you. Totally. It is crazy. Because um, I can get forgot, I'll be be forgotten, that can happen. Yeah. It'd be so easy. It it's, happens to everybody. I just saw Babylon. And you see, you see Babylon? No, not yet. You see it? There's no. ads all over this there's city a great, for it. Yeah, I know. But there's a great scene in it. Um where uh, this one, the, the, the like the journalist character is talking to um, Brad Pitt's character. He was like the really big actor in the back in the day, and uh, and they're like, is he forgotten? And she writes this article, and he goes in, and, and he's like, well, why would you write this? And she's like, because it's like you can't take it personally. Like we're all, we all are doing our own thing. We all could be. I could be forgotten. Like I will be. I will be replaced. There will be millions of others like just like us. And I'll go to a party. You know, like a very. That's why I moved out of L.A. a little bit because I go to all these sceny parties. Like a, a like a fashion party or whatever it is, and I see all these kids that are same height, same hair, same little facial structure, kind of like trying to be independent Bob Dylan type dude. Everybody's kind of like got their own idiosyncrasy, and it's like, okay, but what, what makes me though? What makes me unique though? You know, you being you, right? But everybody else is also them being them. So, you know, and it's not, it's not like a competitiveness that I have. It's just like I gotta, I gotta, I gotta develop into that young leading man allegedly. And, but ma- how do I make it? How do I make it? I mean, I guess it's just a self expression thing. Cause I do find that there are some actors who will play it really close to the book, <coughs> or not even actors, but like there's photographers too. Like I have a really great friend, Damon Baker. If you know him, he's an, an excellent photographer. And he, he doesn't do, like, it, it, he's, it's almost what he's doing is classical, but he's applying his own. There's something about it that nobody else could do. There's nobody else that could achieve what he achieved. And there's actors like that too, like Jack Lemon, who's my. Uh-huh. You can always distinguish that, like a Jack Lemon uh, uh, portray or a Jack M- Lemon character, because the only he would do it that way. There's a there's there's probably a handful of choices that an actor can make, like seven right things to do for a delivery of a line. I think there's like like oh well that went wrong or whatever. Like you know there's there's probably a handful of ways that they could do it and they would all be right. But Jack Lemon, there's a there's like a sub a subterranean one that Jack Lemon can do, or Robin Williams. They can, only them can do it. Is that a muscle? Like, can you? Is that something that's that, figured that, out over that, time? That, that's the thing that you're born with, and not everybody has that. There's a lot of actors who who are great and took a lot of lessons and whatever. Um, but there's some that took no lessons, which they shouldn't gloat about. But you know, I never took a lesson. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but like they. 
there's there's something that there's maybe it is a muscle or a spark I I think that that is super unique. But it's to innate. A it's person. not acquired. So yeah, yeah, you can't acquire that stuff. I think there's things that people are born with. But that it could be a muscle that one has that others don't. I don't know if it's a literal physical muscle. I think that's no. I don't think that's. But I do think that it's an instinct or into in, intuition or something. Something something cosmic. And you have this. I like to think so. Fuck yeah. I've been told that I have this. Is that how one actually realizes they have it? They can't. Do, that do that they I'm told think, it. Yes. No. Oh no! I think that it's. I think it's like almost like a Tourettec thing. Like, like it has. You have to have it. Although you can't drop it. It's always there. Like it's just the way you embody it, and people are are somehow attracted to it universally. Like generally. Have you realized that there's other great actors that also have this? Yeah. Around you. Totally. Who? There's so many. My friend Finn. I got a great friend Finn Wolf. But also, I think that he's he's. Oh, Finn Wolf is yeah, super talented. Love Finn Wolfhard. He's one of my bestest friends on planet Earth. Yes. And he's he's also great at that. And and also Wyatt, my friend Wyatt Olaf and Jaden uh, Martell, um, and I, I got a bunch of other. I, I yeah. Sophia Lillis. I'm naming all the it people, but but these are my tightest. <laughs> um, they like they, they have something that 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 nobody else has. And there's also a lot of doppelgangers out there too. Like there's a lot of people who. I have maybe two people that I want to act like, and that's probably Robin Williams and Jack Lemmon. Um, also, Ray Fiennes is great. These are all like these are all people that own that that they who played the part. Also, Sonny Soljic, I love that kid. He like I really wanted to do mid nineties when I was when that's why I started skating in the first place. But he uh, he got mid nineties, and I was so thrilled that he got it. I was like because he's got that, and I don't have that, and that's great because otherwise the movie wouldn't wouldn't be the the movie that it was. Because he, he made that his own, I guess, you know? How, how often like, does do that happen? That. Where you, like, don't get something or you want something and it just doesn't come your way, but you see somebody else and you're like, I could not have done it as well as they did. Mostly every time. Unless, I think there might have been t- maybe once or twice, honestly, that I've been like, God, that kid sucked. I totally could have. <laughs> he missed all the beats. He missed it all. He, like, I could have done that. I could have done that better. And that's probably a moment of... Uh, uh, insecurity or e- negative ego or something or maybe honesty maybe yeah probably i mean there's also there's moments that are like factually like that guy did badly yeah, yeah th- he did badly Our, I, there's moments that i think i watch a take and i'll be like oh i missed that i missed my beat like there like there was a a risk i should have taken there that i didn't and, and it wasn't that funny you know, or, or whatever. what did you want that you didn't get well, mid nineties was a big one, but I was super. Oh, and then there's this show that my, my that I was just talking about Wyatt did this show, City on Fire, and I you knew it was really funny. As I said, I said to them because I was it was a really long audition process, and I was like, you know, if I don't end up getting this, because I know that there's said there's one other guy. It's like between you and one other guy. And I was like, well, look, if I don't end up getting this, I know you have one other guy, but but you should really look at Wyatt Olaf. <laughs> Wyatt Olaf would be superb. I've thought about him while I'm reading the script, while I'm reading my lines. I'm like thinking, if I don't get this, he should. And they're like. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then I get the call the next day. Like Wyatt Olaf is has, is going to be in this thing. He's got the part. And he was the other guy. And I was like, well, there you fucking go. That's it. And like, I'm so glad, brother. There's something to this. I like. Not everyone would do that. Not everyone would look casting directors in the eye and be like, if it's not me, it needs to be this person. I wouldn't have done it at a certain part of a place in my career. And and now that I, I have a few good things under my belt, I feel like I can. It's okay. What you, you put know, out, whatever what happens, you, happens. Now. What, what you put out is what you get back too. Yeah, and there is true. something to true friendship that may supersede something else. Well, I'm never competitive with my friends, and there was a kid, Noah Jupe, who's now my one of my bestest friends. Used to hate him. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be, I used to be like, oh, he's British, he's handsome, he's same height, he looks like me, he's just a hotter British version of me. But now, I, that guy's <laughs> my bestest friend, and I worked with him, and we had th- one of the most soul bonding could. Spiritual connections ever. We're in the jacuzzi. We were in this movie uh, that should be coming out in June. Um, and we're sitting in a jacuzzi in Spokane, Washington. And we're talking and all of a sudden, we played brothers in the movie. And all of a sudden he looks at me and he goes, hey, Joe. And I was like, yeah, Donnie? Because that was our character's name. And we talked and our, our characters for like two hours. And then, dude, the, the freaking Aurora Borealis shows up. Or I don't know if it was Aurora Borealis, but it was the Northern Lights above us. Holy and we're shit. like, dude. It's a sign. Have you always felt like you were the best person for the roles that you've gotten? Yeah, I find that casting directors know best. I've never doubted. Sometimes? I've doubted myself a little bit, but I've always been like, no, I, I got the part, so I got to make. I got to do it. I have no other choice but to, to be the best at it. Have you ever accepted something that you had to walk away from? Accepted something that I had to walk... Yeah. 
oh yeah, I was supposed to do. I guess I could say yeah, this is fine. I was supposed to do Euphoria. I was supposed to be that a- a- ashtray on Euphoria. Oh, and what? I didn't do it because I did Shazam. Oh. And I'm so glad about that. I'm so glad because he died or didn't he die? I think so. Yeah. yeah. So I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie Freeman will never die. <laughs> if he dies, dude, I'll be pissed. If Freddie Freeman dies, then then I'll be like, Fuck, I'll do it for you. <laughs> no. Then I'll regret everything. There's something to Shazam that is like you can't I love it. And I always wanted to be in the DC universe. Also, like I loved Batman. Batman was my favorite dude on planet Earth, and I wanted to do. I wanted to be in DC. To be honest, like Shazam. Luca, those are forever things yeah. that last, bro. When That's we true. are gone and our grand, like our grandkids, our grandkids, grandkids, they will still enjoy these movies. That's a great thing. Is that fucking wild to think about? Yeah, that 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 is like that's mind melting. I don't understand. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. That's that's the best part about it. One of the best parts about it about making movies. I just read. I so I've, got, I've been done going down that Babylon. Uh, rabbit hole. Which, by the way, it's like about 1920s Hollywood, right? Yes, and I just read the book, Hollywood Babylon, which, if you haven't read it, it's so freaky. There's so much freaky sh- But also, it was golden, and people were like, we're doing something, we're making movies, we're making movies, we're, we're making dreams become physical. Physical, like, we're, we're making the dreams that we have in our sleep, uh, like, real, you know, physical things. And I was like, that's so powerful. That's so, like, the, the principle of making a movie is so, it must make me emotional, it gives me chills, like, that's why I love movies. It's just mo- like I just I don't know. It's so heavy. It's so decadent. It's much bigger than any one person or collection of people. Yeah, I mean books too, but but there's something about movies that that will stay in the timeline of or or, or, or the or the the this the what do you call it like the you know what I'm talking about? Is it the zeitgeist? Yeah, zeitgeist is good. Zeitgeist like the zeitgeist of our history historic timeline. They're just there. They're implanted there, and they're still there, and they're stuck there. Do you, you can watch them whenever. How do you learn? Like, did you, did you go to school? Yeah, I went to school. I didn't go to college. But I did, did take class. I took college courses. Did you go to real school? I did. I went to uh, New Roads in Santa Monica. Oh, sick. Yeah. No, like homeschool shit. No, I never did homeschool. I did, well, yeah, I graduated, like, last year from high school, and I it was the last year was on a line because of COVID. And, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, that wasn't, like, by choice. No, no, no. Are you happy that you kept that experience? Yeah. Well, my mom didn't. I was like, there were so many times I was like, Mom, I just, let me take the GED. Let me take the chess P like all my other actor friends. <laughs> and she's like, no, Jack, that's impossible because education is pr- prime. It's important. It's ultimate. It's epic. And I was like, yeah, whatever. She used to be a teacher, so that's like her shtick. Yeah, but you're incredibly smart. She's incredible. And I'm so glad that actually I did. I did stay in school. Not that I learned anything, but I think I did. I It, it, it helped. I did, actually. I did. Dude, I, socially, you probably learned things. There's yeah, a lot that goes into school I more than books. The obsessions that I've made with philosophy and music theory and act uh, theater stuff. Like I also just took a Shakespeare class, which I've never taken an acting class, but I did just took a Shakespeare class, which was so informative about, oh my God, like that that helped. But just the, 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 the dynamics of... That you have to achieve. And it's also like the hardest kind of acting. Could you do it? I could do it. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, I think so. I think I can do it. I don't know if I'm perfect at it. It's hard. It's so weird because you're speaking a different language totally. pretty much. But every, there's so much deliberation. There's so much intentionality. There's literally, there's no subtext. Like every, they say everything they're feeling. It's so poetic and weird and like, they're like, I feel this because of this. And this is why, because of that thing that happened earlier. And I'm just, like, this is what I'm feeling. And I'm going to say it all about, I'm just talking about it now. And it's it's so crazy those big rants they go on. What drives Ridiculous. wanting to like learn about that or kind of conquer that? Well, because I I, I remember I realized something is that there's always room because I kind of got bored. Mm. I was acting and I was like, what else is there? Like what? <laughs> there's like, Shakespeare. Yeah, there's Shakespeare. <laughs> but like, <laughs> there's always room. I was like, I know that I can get better. I there has to be a way for me to get better. So I have to stay teachable because there's always room for improvement. I will never be. Realistically, I will never be as good as I want. Probably ever. I'll never be the best that I want to be. Are you happy with that? Yeah, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled because that is so inspiring that I'll that I'll, I will always be striving for more and that I'll always there is always room for improvement. I will never have access to my full potential until the day I die, I think. Does that drive your interest in wanting to make music? Totally. Yeah, but also I'm not that great at music. I love music uh, and I, I made an album that I feel good about, but I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Wait. What the? You have an album? Do you yeah. produce it on your own? Did yeah. you write it on your own? I produced it and, and wrote it. And what? I know, but it's but it's like it's not radio stuff. It, it's like kind of jammy. It's like jam band psychedelic, um, sentimental psychedelic sounds. Oh, I fucking like it. Yeah, 
what do you, what do you like? Are you? Is it like electronic? Or are you playing real I'm instruments? I'm playing guitar. And I'm I play all the all instruments, all live instruments. I'm playing like percussion stuff, but it's it's like production wise, I don't know how great it is. Because I hear all these other songs, I'm like such a good production, and I hear mine, it's like oh, not that good. <laughs> but I need a compressor guy to come compress on stuff. So, but you want to get better at it. Yeah, I do really badly, and so I'm taking a class. <laughs> I'm taking a, uh, uh, an audio engineering course at Dark Horse in a songwriting and composition class. Also, wow, yeah, look at you! Isn't that cute? On, that a, <laughs> on a quest for knowledge. <laughs> That's me, dude. Well, because what else am I going to do? Uh, what else am I going to do? Party? I, I like mean, to do that too, but less than I like to learn and be alone and learn stuff. Really. Also, why'd you go to Nashville? Oh, because it's great. Music. It's re- that too, but I was shooting Shazam two in Atlanta, and it's pretty close. Yeah, and that's why I, there was like a, a there was a COVID break. Something and we drove. I uh, mean, my mom we drove to um to to Nashville or to to see some family. We have some family there, like with like distant relatives. My mom grew up a little bit in in, in uh, East Tennessee, oh. so we moved to Franklin. Oh, or Nashville. Yeah, Nashville. Central. Yeah, look yeah. at you. Yeah, that. It, so do you have any place here in LA? Nope. What I the? did. I grew up here my whole. I lived here my whole life. I, I lived in the Palisades. That's crazy. Yeah. And Most people want to get successful and move here, and you're like, "No, I'm successful. I'm leaving." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what it was. But also, I felt like there was so much. Uh, not a stab at you guys for living in LA. I lived in LA forever, and I could. I probably. I want to move back here when I'm older, like when I have a kid and wife or whatever. I want to. I'd love to live here. That'd be great. In the Palisades again. It's just like, but I don't think I could live in the Palisades. It's not great for. you. This age, I think, and not who's to say that Nashville is, but I'm also making a lot of great friends in Nashville, no, a lot Nashville's of music friends. Cool. So cool, Tennessee is really wholesome. Yes, yes, it's so wholesome, and and I'm doing open mics and I'm having a blast with these. Oh, that's amazing! Great young people, yeah, I'm really connecting and having a blast. Wait, that's fucking cool. Yeah, it's super cool, and and also like even when I'm not hanging out with people, I'm ri- I'm so much more inspired. I'm in nature, like nature's yeah. what inspires me. I go out in nature and you know uh, write. And and or make bring my guitar into the forest and like put my fist in trees and like pull out honeycombs and be like whoa nice or like <laughs> yeah wow that's how you become one with Mother Nature that's it dude Mother Nature's super super dope I also realized I, this is a new realization I had I was out there and I was like man you know if there's anything that's perfect no human is perfect nothing else is nothing is perfect but if there's one thing that's perfect it's like nature at every frame mm-hmm. no matter what it's doing it's always doing what it's supposed to. And that's so cool. It's just reacting to whatever it is. And it's, that's per- that's perfection, I think. But you know what? The reaction to what we give it is pretty scary sometimes. So true. Six years and counting. That's what we have until we run out of time to reverse climate change. Just a little heads up. Oh, shoot. Link in the description if you want to educate yourself. Oh, good. Good for you guys. What's the, what's the link to? I mean, there's we'll, not going to be a link we'll, though. No, we'll put, no. I, I'll put a <laughs> fucking link. I will put a fucking link. <laughs> I will. Drop the link. I like that you live in Tennessee. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, That's great. how you stay true and whole. And Tennessee's like, really cool. Really? Yeah, it's an amazing, amazing place. I love Memphis. Yeah, Memphis is cool too. I'm going to Nashville in a couple weeks. So Are uh, you? Yeah. Send me a text. I will I'll show yeah. you around. I, I, I would love to attend a few open mics. Oh, would you? How long are you yeah. going to be there for you? Probably like maybe four days. Okay. Have you been to Leaper's Fork? No. That's the coolest. That's the coolest place ever. Now you got to educate me because I've been to Nashville a couple times, but I've never really seen it. Seen it. I like Do go like in barbecue? for work and then leave. Yes. I have this tiny, there's a tiny, tiny little barbecue place uh, called Fox and Lock, but that's where I also did a, 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 a open mic and I met some really cool old dude. Shout out Alan Webb. Great, great old guy. Oh shit. I just, Actually, you probably wouldn't like that. You like to be young guy. We'll call guy. him young guy. Yeah, great young guy, Alan Webb. <laughs> a 60-year-old young guy. And do none of these people know that you're a movie star? No. Well, no, not really. There's sometimes, like, if I'm hanging out in Bell Mead, which is the college town where all the huh. Belmont pretty ladies go, um, <laughs> or, like, the little uh, lassies, lassies from the Vanderbilt. Uh, I'm really trying to blend yeah? <laughs> yeah. I frequent those establishments. Um, because I, have, I have boots. I have a hat. You do? No. Do oh, you? I do. I do. I went to the Fuck boot yeah. barn. I went to the boot barn and uh, I bought uh, boots. Oh, shit. I bought some Cody James boots. I've also been getting into country music. I love country. You do? So good. Good, right? It's so good. It's great. Storytelling yeah. at its finest. So true. And also the messages and the metaphors, they're like, mm. you know, like British people have like great meta- like uh, like analogies for stuff that like just makes sense. Like we have like really poor ones, I feel like. But like it, you go to you go to Nashville and they're like, it's just the, 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 the or, or the South, they have great... I don't know, like knee high to a grasshopper. I don't know. It's just great. It's great stuff. It's so poetic. 
I love knee it. high. It means like they're, oh, they were just knee high to a grasshopper, like a short person. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah, I, I love it. Country radio is the country radio is the only radio I can listen to without getting annoyed. Really? Maybe that's your sound. Maybe that's your music sound you're looking for. Maybe kind you're gonna be a country artist. Kind of is. I did do a country vibey thingy. Yeah. Look at yeah, you. I do. I, lo- I've, I have I have made an album with with ten songs on it. This is the first time I'm ever speaking about this publicly, which I'm actually fine with. Uh. <laughs> I'm fine with it. Okay, no need to. He's not. He's not trying to convince himself right now. In the moment. <laughs> no, I'm very confident and secure with this. I have ten songs, but I've made like two hundred songs, and they're all. I've made a bunch of tried different genres. I just did a Latin one that was really fun. Kate. What the fuck? I this know. is crazy. It's so fun, dude. It's but, so. It's also pretty easy once you get it down. Once you get the stuff down. Well, I, I do think that there is something to like. You know doing a hundred songs and then doing another hundred. Like you really, but I'm only doing it because I'm obsessed with it. Not because I've, uh, but you're uh, doing it for you. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Doing it for me. Do you care to share it one day? Yeah. But I also, like people are going to expect something. They're going to be like, want to give me compliments on it. And I don't really want them because they don't get it. And maybe that's me being selfish. <laughs> I don't think they'll get it. I just don't think that also maybe my audience, they don't, they like pop stuff. They like, and I, I don't want to make pop stuff. I made one pop song and, and it's on the album. And um, it's fun. It kind of sounds like a Justin Bieber uh, beat in the beginning, and then it goes off, and then it gets like uh, really. This is band called uh, Two Bob Crewe. You know them? No. Yeah, they're weird. This uh, this uh, Peruvian band. They're crazy. They're like tribal primal sounds, and then it turns into that. But so then they wouldn't get it. They'd be like, "What happened? It was supposed to be Justin Bieber." What if you release music, but as something else? I was. I would. I would. And like, it would be a great alias. Like we did. Like I have a, the alias actually. Oh, don't don't share. I don't want to share it. Yeah, because yeah. that would give me away. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that, would, that would defeat the purpose of an alias. Yeah, then I would, it would be wasted forever. <laughs> Damn it! Yeah, thank God I didn't. No, but I like this. Like something you cover. Like you cover your face. Maybe. Like, no. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool, actually. Like, so then nobody knows because if you're fr- like, you don't want people to give you compliments on it. Yeah. Then, or like, like give myself a big fake beard. That'd be that's great. Good. Yeah. Like, it, see, it has hair. Dude, have you seen these like realistic old man masks? Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, we should stop that's talking about it. Better than a fake ID. I agree with you. Yeah. But the more we talk about it, the more people eventually connect dots. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're right. Should stop. Which sucks because Jack Dylan Gray. I'm a cryptoid. Cool. Nobody knows me. <laughs> okay, j- I'm the master of vagueness. Didn't I say that earlier? Jack Dylan Grazer is a great country artist name. You think? I think that's a great oh, country yeah. Jack Dylan Grazer. It's there a good go. name. I know. I want to tell you my alias, but I, I I'll tell you no, after. Yeah, please. It's really good. No, this like, but your real name gives many different energies. Yeah. 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 You got a good name. Thank- I know. I'm really grateful. My mom said. My mom saw said that she had a dream of me being a boxer. She's like, because Jack is such a good boxer's name, you know? You could have been a boxer and not like the least athletic person <laughs> anybody knows. But you really lived up to something. Yeah, that's good. You Thank pu- God. You punch trees all the time. I punch trees, putting my fist in trees, pulling out honeycombs and looking at them like, also, I love mycology. <laughs> I'm right. I have this Audubon field guy that I'm obsessed with and I have my uh, my journal and I'm, I'm obsessed with mushrooms. You track mushrooms? I have a, tra- I have a mushroom on my finger. Love it. That's my favorite one. Amanita Muscaria, everybody. By the way, you got to go see Shazam. March 17th. We're going to put a link in the description below so you can, like, you know, find a place to go, you know, buy tickets and stuff. Is it like an IMAX? Like, we like... Yeah, it'll be an IMAX, I'm sure. That's really sick. Yeah. I I like the IMAX experience. Daddy likes to shake when I see a movie. Daddy likes to shake when he sees a movie? Yeah, I want to be in it. I want to be entrenched. I love that. You know, it's viscera. I want to experience that. Up to my eyeballs in it. Boom. You ever go to the movie theater and watch your own movies? Yeah. Yeah, usually with a girl. You what? Just be like, oh, wait, I'm in this? That's weird. <laughs> no fucking way. You guys watching this with me? That's really... You no, did that? No, no, I don't think so. I have, but, I, but it's great when I'll go to like... I'll see... I wish to go... I see Avatar um, and uh, and my, my trailer played before it and I was like, that's, that's, that's great. That's super cool. I do love that. Yeah. But I, I don't usually go to the theater to see my movie. No, I never... I mean... Unless when I was actually... No, that's not true. When I was a little guy, my friends were like... From the high school, from school, they're like, "Let's go see it in the movie theater." And I was like, "Yeah, come on, let's That's go see cool. it." You know, because I was a kid and it was like an exciting new thing. But do now, not really so much. Do you screen them before the premiere, or do you just me personally? Yeah, do you like go? I should probably start doing that when I get old. Like when I no, but I do. I haven't been doing that. You just let it go. I just let it go. I know. Because in the, the moment, premiere. you really don't know what you're making, right? Or do you? What meaning like because you're doing a bunch of different scenes and then it's all coming together like do you have a solid I, idea of all I, of it? I try to watch as many dailies as possible, but yeah, uh, you know it's all up to the editing really at the end. Like I watch a movie, feel very confident about it, and then it gets edited, and I'm like, different, totally different, totally different from what I anticipated. But, but you have to release and relinquish control. Yeah. Oh, totally. 
that's all you. And same with the writers. You know, they have to. They just like surrender it and they push it away and whatever happens happens and they kind of lose control. Unless they get a great contract where they're like, yeah, you know, you can have as much control as you want, which is, I don't know how rare it is. I, I'm not in the writers guild. See Shazam two. Mm-hmm. Link in the description below to get those tickets. Zachary Levi in that movie. Asher Angel. Rachel's Helen Mirren. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. I know. We love Rachel Ziegler. You do? Yes. Was she on here? No. Well, it's we, a funny story. We're like, oh, we're, she said no. We're, <laughs> no, she said yes. <laughs> oh, no, you that's said the no. No, we said yes too. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but of course we said yes. What are you? I'm gonna deny Steven Maria. Spielberg said no. That's a crazy. I don't know. What the I'm, the I'm West Side <laughs> Story thing is like really quite a magnificent movie. It's but one of my also, favorite musicals of all time. Yes. Yeah. Like, oh. But also that audition process was really wild. I heard. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, we'll talk. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm. Rachel, hello. Come Hi, on. Rachel. We'd love to have you on. She responds on Twitter all the time. You're amazing. You're incredible. Can we yeah. test her vagueness real quick? Mine? Yes. Yes, go ahead. What can you tell us about Shazam Fury of the Gods? Well, it's a story of triumph. It's a story <laughs> of family. and um, It's all about family. You know, what's at the end of the day is really just like a great story to behold and for friends, families, and foe alike. And also, there's dragons in it because it's in the trailer. <laughs> See it, Shazam fifteenth, the seventeenth of March. Shazam two, Fury of the Gods, Shazam, Shazam March first, fifteenth, oh, seventeenth. I'm melting. <laughs> that made me just want to go right now. <laughs> I'm gonna go, man. <laughs> Shit, you're amazing, Jack Dylan Grazer. Everybody, Woo. thank you for hanging Woo. out. Mwah. Thank you, everybody.